Hello and welcome to another video of time series forecasting and in this video I'm going to talk about another important concept that we are going to use extensively in this class and this concept is residual diagnostics and uh, these residual diagnostics will help us to analyze whether we are using all the available information in the data set so after we'll apply any forecasting method on any data we will have two types of values the real values will be yt values and then we will have our forecasting values so remember whenever there is a hat on any variable name it means this variable is estimated or fitted so we will have these two values so from these two values what we can do is we can calculate residual values and we're going to call it et which will be equal to yt minus yt hat and that is how far away our fitted values are from the actual values so essentially if we want our fitted values or forecasted values to be as close to the actual values as possible if our forecasting model is giving us forecasted values those are very close to the actual values we know that our residual will be closer to zero let me show you an example of how to calculate these residuals okay so here's an example that we used earlier and here we have a data for uh, four quarters and we have our sales value so now this will be our actual value or yt what we are going to do here is we are going to predict or forecast different values using the naive method essentially it doesn't matter because we can use any forecasting method but for the purpose of this example we are going to use the naive method which means we cannot get our forecast here but here our forecast will be the last observed value which is 2 and then quarter 3 our last observed value is 5 and uh, in quarter 4 our prediction is 6 which was our last observed value in uh, quarter 3 okay so from this we can calculate these residuals by using yt the actual values minus the fitted values at time t so essentially we do not get any number here but yt minus yt hat here is 5 minus 2 which is 3 and then we have 6 minus 5 which is 1 and then we have 5 minus 6 which is minus 1 so these are our residuals and the way we calculate it is we forecast using a given forecasting method and then we look at how far away our forecasted values are from the actual values. So essentially if our forecasting method is capturing all the available information in the model, we'll see that these forecasted values will be pretty close to these actual values. So any good forecasting method will yield residuals with the following properties. The first two properties are essential but these other two properties these are desirable. So the first property that we want is that residuals are uncorrelated with each other. That is there is no correlation between these residuals. And uh, if the residuals are correlated it means that there is some information left out that should have been used in our forecasting methods that is our forecasting method or these forecasted values can be improved by using some of the information so our residuals should be uncorrelated with each other if not then we should go back and look at our forecasting method and improve our model based on uh, using all the information in the data set so this is the first property that we want these residuals to have and the next property that we want these residuals to have is that the mean of uh, these residuals should be equal to zero it means if we look here the mean value here is three which is far away from uh, zero so what we are saying here is we may be over predicting some time we may be under predicting some time but on average we should be predicting the actual value in that case on average our residual should be equal to zero our residuals should follow these two properties 
Now besides this, there are also two desirable properties in these residuals. The first is called constant variance. That is, uh, if we plot our residuals against time, we should look at a pattern where our residuals are not increasing as we are moving in time. On the other hand, if our residuals are behaving something like this, so see if we are moving in time, our residuals are increasing in value. So if we get this, it means there is something wrong in the model and sometime a simple transformation can do the trick and we can get uh, a constant uh, variance for uh, these residuals. And then we also want these residuals to show normal distribution with mean mu and uh, and a constant variance sigma squared. So these are the four properties that uh, we want these residuals to show. In the next video, I'm gonna show you all of these steps in one video and then we're gonna follow these steps and we're gonna fit a model and then we're gonna analyze the residuals that we get from uh, forecasting method and we're gonna analyze whether the residuals from, uh, from that forecasting method follow these properties or not. All right, I'll see you in the next video, bye-bye.